This is probably one of the most requested videos that I get. Everybody wants to learn how. Today we're going to be talking about free motion quilting. It is something that I have picked up over the years and really enjoy doing. I'm a big advocate for quilting your own quilts. I have only sent one out to a long armor and that is because it was an oversized king quilt. Free motion quilting is not only less expensive, but I enjoy knowing that I created something from the beginning to the end. Now let me show you how I go about free motion quilting. Hello and welcome. I'm Jackie with Jackie Russell Creates where we talk about everything quilting. I give tips, tricks, and techniques for the next sewing project. Now let's talk about free motion quilting. For machine quilting, you're going to need your free motion gloves. You want to make sure that they have the rubber tips on the end for easy gripping. In my Dollar Tree hack video, I have where you use garden gloves that have the little rubber dots on the fingertips. Those work great as well. You're going to need a darning foot or a free motion foot depending on how it's worded in your manual. <coughs> you can also find some templates like this. This is just a curly. We have a meander. I have some hearts. I have some leaves. I've used these on some of my quilts. All you do is lay it out, trace your pattern all over your quilt, and then you're just going to follow those lines with your free motion. You can also find some templates like this. This is a, a quarter of an inch. It's a harder plastic. Your foot goes in here and you just follow the shape. I am having a hard time being able to use these on my machines. I, I have singers. So if you're able to use these on your machine, comment below and let me know what machine you have that be able to use these grid rulers or free motion rulers because I'm not able to do it on my machine. Or if you have a tip for me on how I can be able to use it on my Singer machine, I would love to hear about that as well. Now, if you spray basted your quilts together, you're able to start anywhere on the quilt. If you pin basted, you're going to want to start in the middle and work your way out because what happens is when your free motion is pushing and you want the excess to be over here versus in the center that it can bulk up and cause creases in the middle of your quilt. And the reason that is is because pinning is less secure than if you spray baste it. I like to work in quadrants. So when I do quilting, I'll do one section at a time. And the reason I do that is because when you're working on a huge quilt, it could get daunting and you can get overwhelmed like, oh my gosh, I have such a big piece I have to quilt. When you're working in smaller sections or in blocks, it's less daunting. You can be able to say, oh, I got this. And it's easier to be able to do a section, especially if you can't quilt it all at one time, you know, you do a section and you don't have to try to remember where you're at, what you're trying to do and which direction you're going and things like that. You work in one, either a block or section and then move on to the next. Some other things that you need to take into consideration, are you going to hand quilt on your um, quilt? I have done a couple quilts where I've done mixed with hand quilting and machine quilting. So you would need to make sure you have that planned out. And you also need to, you know, decide your design before you start and sit down. Now, when I sit down in my sewing machine, I like to take a scrap piece of material and the batting that I am using for my current project and do some test 
loops, runs, just to make sure your tension is right. Because you don't want to start on your project and then have your tension all wrong and then happen to pick it out. So I like to do a sample <coughs> test of my tension and make sure I have everything set up. I also recommend for beginners to start with a smaller project. Don't just jump in and start with a queen size quilt. I recommend starting with either like a mug rug, a taking one of your orphan blocks and adding some batting and fabric and just to the back of it and just playing around with that. So today we're going to just work on a small wall hanging that I have done and I'm just going to show the meander stitch and then how you can add in some loop-de-loops you know um, <clears throat> you and when you're quilting you need to be able to go side to side up and down especially if you're using the meander stitch I mean because it's just nothing but loops the dupes and but you don't want to make it look like you're going in a row you, you know you want to swirl it around <clears throat> and so going up and down side to side <clears throat> and you know even if you're using you know like the leaf template or the heart template you want to be able to <clears throat> excuse me go from edge and then you're going to come down and then you're going to do your other row around so, you know, you need to make sure that you can be able to go all directions. Now, to get started, you have your darning foot on, and you need to make sure that you lower your feed dogs. So, let's get sewing. So, some people say that they like to go as fast as you can with your foot pedal and then move your hands slow. I feel I don't have as much control so I found my middle ground that works good for me and that's what you need to do is find your speed of your machine that works best for you and then move your hands slowly so we're gonna start right here and work our way down this edge so what we're gonna you're gonna do first is you want to pull up your bottom thread and I like to do that so then I can be able to tuck them through and you don't have a thread getting all tangled in the back so I'm just going to do a meander stitch just as weaving in and out and hopefully you can see the thread I did pick a darker color thread I like to do a couple of stitches first and then start stitching. Now I'm just going to trim these long tails so they're kind of out of my way. You can do long loops, little loops. Let's say you get yourself in a bind and you don't know how to get out. Just do what I call a loop de dupe so I'm just going to make a circle and come back down. And I'm just making circles in both directions. And you want to kind of practice this so your circles or your loops aren't jagged. 
that they run smoothly. Now the faster you move, the longer your stitches are. <clears throat> so I like to go at a steady, slow pace. And this is the reason why you want to have less bulk, is to make sure that you can be able to glide your machine over them. edges. So I'm going to finish this one up and then I'm going to bring out another one and show you how you can actually quilt around a design. Now we got our other quilt out and I have a blue thread in the top and a brown thread for the bobbin. And because this one's pinned we have to start in the middle of the quilt and work our way out. But I'm not doing a design on this one. I'm actually following the print of the design on the quilt. So we're going to start right here. I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up. And sometimes it's a little hard to get with gloves on, so I just use a pin to help pull it through. And now I'm just going to follow the straight line across my design. And so I want to be able to work in sections. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to work over to this side toward the left and upwards. And it, this, is, this one is a straight stitch, but you'll be, you know, getting little curves and all of that in there. This is what they consider as thread painting. And I'm just going to do some loop de dupes meander in this border till I get to the next section. And I'm just going to follow that line again. I'm leaving the most outer border here for the time being. If you feel like you don't have enough control, just slow down your needle. If you get to a section where you need to rotate, if you feel like it's easier for you to move, just put your needle down and rotate your project whichever way that you feel more comfortable being able to maneuver your stitches. You don't have to keep it straight. That is a nice thing about it but once you start getting a bunch of bulk on one side it's, you know it's easier to rotate it and move it and plus you'll find which way 
that you'll be able to move a lot easier than normal. And that is how I got started in doing free motion quilting. You feel that you're not ready for this? Go back, watch the straight line um, quilting video. I'll link it up here. But your best thing in order to improve and be able to get good at free motion is to practice. To, to actually sit down with some fabric and some batting and free motion. That's why I say start with something small. Take them orphan blocks and practice with those. Because if you mess them up, who cares? Put a binding on them and use them for a hot pad. No big deal. It's a sample. It's trial and error. You just got to go and do it and play around. See which, which, how fast you can go, which directions are easier for you to manipulate and move in. Some people take their sewing machine a lot faster than I do. It's what you're comfortable with. I would love to see what you create. If you have any concerns or comments, please list them in the comment section below. Until then, happy quilting my friends.